Hi guys, how are you doing? Um, today's video is for Tim, who is one of my subscribers. He very kindly left a comment requesting this video and I thought it was a great idea. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you some horror movies, uh, which are my favourite horror movies. I also have a ton of them written down on these post-its because I don't own uh, all of my favourites, I own some of them and the rest I just have either streamed or I'm waiting to get the box set or just for other reasons. Um, and I will guarantee that I don't name all of them, there'll definitely be some that I miss because there's just so many. I am a massive, massive horror fan, I absolutely love horror and I thought that I would just share with you some of my favourite movies. So let's start. First up we have The Nightmare on Elm Street Collection, so classic slasher and definitely a comfort film of mine, which sounds really weird I know because why would you be comforted by this guy? <laughs> but it really is, like I could put these on and just it gives me a really nice feeling of like nostalgia. I actually love all of them. I know some are better than others and some don't hold your attention as much, but I really, really love these films. And when I went to HorrorCon recently, like for the Love of Horror convention, they had some setups of like Freddy's boiler room and Freddy, they had a big Freddy chair that you could sit in and some of the actors, the Dream Warriors from uh, that movie uh, also were doing autographs and photos so that was really really cool. So my first is the Nightmare on Elm Street collection. Next up is another classic which is a favourite of a lot of people and that is It. Um, I prefer the remakes, don't like come for me but I prefer the remakes to the original just because I think the original actually was the first horror movie that I ever saw. Um, I had it on in, in my bedroom on TV and I was like, what is this? Who is this clown guy? Why does his head turn into a dog? <laughs> I was quite scared by it. It always like haunted me because I was quite young. But I love these movies, this one and obviously chapter two. I just think they're really well done, they creep me out, they make me jump even though I know that the jump scare is coming. I always, uh, like I'm so jumpy, like if I watch a horror movie in the cinema I squeal, like literally I do a high pitched kind of squealing noise, it's really really embarrassing. But there we go. So that's my second favourite is It. Third film. The Purge. I wouldn't necessarily think of this as like a Halloween horror kind of thing that you could put on, but I think as a collection they are really good. I really enjoyed them and I would watch them again. Some horror movies you enjoy but you wouldn't necessarily re-watch them, but these I really did enjoy and I haven't watched them in a while so that might be something that I come back to soon. Okay, another comfort movie. I could literally fall asleep to this, which is really weird. 1408. So this is about um, John Cusack who stays in haunted rooms because he writes books about rooms that are supposedly haunted and he comes across the mysterious 1408 and it really is haunted. It makes people, you know, mutilate themselves and commit suicide and things like that. This has two endings. And it was only very recently that I actually saw the second ending. I had only seen, massive spoilers ahead by the way, I had only ever seen the ending where uh, Samuel L. Jackson is in his car at the end and he sees him, like he's dead, John Cusack is dead, and he sees him all burnt up in the back of the car. But the other day I watched this on Netflix and it actually had the ending where he survives. Um, but 
he know that it really did happen because he's playing back um, some audio and he hears the ghostly voice of his dead uh, daughter. So, yeah, I don't know which ending is more popular or more widely um, shown, but I like the one where he dies. I think it's more apt for the whole story. Okay, so next up we have The Shining, uh, and obviously everyone will have heard of this at least, if not seen it. So this is a complete classic, and I could watch this over and over. I did actually really enjoy uh, Doctor Sleep as well. I thought that that was really good. I thought it really did justice to like carrying on the story. Um, with not too much kind of like just doing it for the sake of being back at the hotel at the end but yeah this will always be the classic okay moving on to from the dusk till dawn I saw this when I was really young again and I thought it was brilliant like fantastic I loved it all of these movies for me sounds strange because if you're not a horror movie addict or you don't love horror movies it's hard to understand how horror movies can be so comforting because at the end of the day they're supposed to be horror they're supposed to scare you but a lot of these movies aren't necessarily massively um, disturbing or gory they just have great storylines great acting great just everything you just really get sucked in and every time you watch it you it reminds you of the times that you've watched it previously um i have actually written down on my post-it notes some really movies that have disturbed me and i know the whole iceberg thing where the movies that we think are scary are just the top of the iceberg and then it goes down and down and you can get really some horrible disturbing horror movies but these are literally just ones that I always find myself coming back to. Balls Within is a pretty new movie and I watched this when it came out and it's not really a horror movie but I guess the genre would be like either horror or I don't know I don't know what the genre would be actually but I thought it was like kind of like a whodunit like a bit like Knives Out or um things like that but it was really really good I really enjoyed that so I thought I would just include it because I happened to have the DVD and last but by no means least because this is my all-time favorite film is The Lost Boys this is the trilogy because um, I got this just so I could give number two and three a go um, but Lost Boys uh, it's just my all-time favorite movie ever in the world. I couldn't even tell you what it is about it. It's just so, so good. <laughs> I really I really couldn't put my finger on why. Just, I, I watch it over and over and over again. I watch it if I'm sick, like if I'm ill. I watch it at Halloween, I watch it at Christmas, I watch it in the summer. I just, I could watch this over and over again. And you know, the sax player when star is like standing at the um like near the beach on the like boardwalk type thing and and they're all dancing to this guy playing the sax um tim capello he comes to for the love of horror convention and he plays he plays i still believe from the movie and he loves it so much you can see that he is just so happy to be there and he's so excited that everybody loves his like 12 minutes on the screen in this movie and he is such a nice guy he is the nicest celebrity because he's just so so excited and like he really interacts well with the crowd and he's always happy to take selfies and stuff like that so it was really cool to meet him and to see him play live at the event so yeah so that's all in terms of like hard copies because now everything's streaming it's kind of easier to
to find things uh, on Netflix and places like that, Amazon Prime, whatever. So I've written a few down. I'm going to give them to my skeleton man over here. He's kind of lost the will to live. <laughs> Literally, no pun intended. He's just like, his head keeps rolling around. So first up is Evil Dead. Um, again, right up there with my favourite films. It's definitely in the top five of my favourite ever films. Um, I've watched all of the different, you know, remakes and whatnot. But I even loved the series. I only watched it once. I should probably go back to it. But anything with Ash is just fantastic. Really, really good. Okay, another cult classic, Cabin in the Woods which is like a spoof horror movie, like the actual cabin is like supposed to be like the cabin from Evil Dead. It's basically just a bunch of friends go to stay at a cabin in the woods, but it's a setup by the government because there are ancient gods living under the surface of the earth and they have to like be appeased by killing off people in a certain order. And it's all about these people trying to survive. It's a fantastic thoroughly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Really easy to watch. Again, these are all fun movies. They're not really horror horror, but I am into all kinds of horror. I like comedy, slasher movies. I like, I do like gory films and like scarier films, but I'm not massively a fan of things that are too disturbing because they stick with me so bad I wake up in the night and like I'm panicking <laughs> about Halloween obviously that always has to be on your Halloween horror movies list I particularly love Halloween 3 uh, Season of the Witch which is nothing to do with Michael Myers or the storyline of Halloween whatsoever but I love the, the storyline of it it's about a mask company, well, they're not really a mask company, but they've made these masks that all the children are going to wear on Halloween, and when they play a certain song on the TV, uh, the masks are going to kind of like melt into the children's faces and kill the children, and I'm, I'm really not doing it any justice, but I really actually love that one, and all of the normal Halloween Michael Myers films I enjoy as well. They get a little bit repetitive, um, which I also found with the Friday the 13th. I, it was kind of the same story over and over again, but, and, and you kind of, you, you're well aware that he's not going to die, <laughs> because otherwise the franchise would die, but no, they are very, very good. So this one is not a film. But Haunting of Hill House was based on on a film, The Turning, uh, The Turning of the Screw. I, oh my god, I can't remember. But um, The Haunting of Hill House and The Haunting of Bly Manor, they were so good. I binge watched them in pretty much one sitting, and then I loved them so much I wanted to show them to uh, two other people. So I actually binge watched Hill House three times once. Or maybe, maybe it was twice, but I definitely watched it in quick succession a couple of times. I thought it was really good. It had jump scares. Um, it had a really good story. Fantastic actors. And I'm really looking forward to the next instalment of whatever it is that they do. So, even though it's not a movie. Uh, so here's an underrated horror film. And it's got a really low rating in terms of like critics don't like it at all it's real trash it's called slashes and it's basically a japanese game show where contestants uh put themselves forward to go into like a haunted house type thing or a house of horrors filled with real life murderers who are actually <laughs> actually allowed to murder you and the trick is to try and get away and survive the night and you get like a million dollars or something like that. It is real, like, it's hilarious and terrible, but I really, I really enjoyed it. I'm quite easy to please in that way. 
a lot of people will be like, oh no, I didn't like it because this, that and the other, but if I have fun watching something, I overlook so much like plot holes or just if it's just bad, I really just enjoy it anyway. I enjoy so many films. There's rarely a film, unless I'm totally like bored and I'm like, mm, it's just not for me. I usually like films. Okay, so this one is one of my all-time favourite franchises. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. So, Hellraiser. I love all of the Hellraiser movies, even though some of them were written to stand alone. They weren't supposed to be Hellraiser, they just bought the rights to them, I'm guessing. But, uh, I love the protagonist, I love uh, Pinhead, and he's just amazing. <laughs> The stories are really good. I don't really know what to say about them, just if you haven't seen them, try it. You'll either love it or you'll be like, what did I just watch? <laughs> very, very good. Paranormal Activity. So everybody I knew had watched this and I'd heard about it and there was obviously so, so many in the franchise and I had never gotten around to watching it because it looked quite jumpy and I'm really not great with jump scares, but I gave it a go uh, recently, and I watched the first two, and I was just so caught up in it all that I then was like, okay, I have to get Amazon Prime so I can watch the next couple, and then I was like, okay, I have to sign up for Paramount Plus free trial so I can watch the next couple, because nowhere has the whole um, collection in one and you have to go to different places to stream it so I was just getting membership to everything just so I could keep up with these films <laughs> and I even watched them in the wrong order because I couldn't tell I think it was like 6 and 7 or something I couldn't tell which was which and I watched them the wrong way around and then realised <laughs> what I'd done but yeah, these are definitely very, very good um, it doesn't sound like a good premise like it's just viewing through the cameras of supernatural happenings going on but it's it's really great I love anything that's paranormal I love you know possession movies and things to do with the devil and stuff like that that's another one that I actually missed I skipped uh, I just realized a uh, devil where they're all in an elevator and one of them is the devil and you need to kind of you try to figure out the whole movie which person is the devil that's a really good one too Creep I watched really recently again it was one that I'd always seen um, people talk about and said that it was really good but I hadn't seen it and I think there's two if I'm correct and I watched both and I thought they were good. Not really horror, more like kind of thriller, I guess, because like he's chasing these people, but I guess it's classed as a horror film. And, oh, again, right up there with my all time favorite ever movies is The Conjuring Universe. I loved all of them. The first two were just perfect. They had jump scares, they had story, they had... I feel like I'm just repeating myself now, but um, I loved The Nun. I thought that was fantastic. I know it's like creepy and she's like so scary and every time I'm cleaning my teeth, I look down into the reflection of the tap and I, there's a shadow that I still don't know what it is, but it always looks like The Nun <laughs> behind me. and. When I first saw it, I was terrified. I was like, what the hell is that? But now I'm kind of like, oh, there she is. <laughs> Watching me clean my teeth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just rambling. But, um, yeah. So I love, I love The Conjuring Universe so, so much. And I really want to get the box set. But um, I'm waiting for uh, the, the Devil Made Me Do It to be included in a, in a big box set so I don't have to get all of them individually. It's kind of like with the Hellraiser movies, they don't do a box set here in the UK of all of the movies. You can get like one, two and three or something and then it's like you have to pay ridiculous crazy prices to have them 
imported and they're locked to specific regions so I just stream them or download them so here is just a few that I thought were actually scary movies so if you're more into being disturbed and having some gore and feeling uncomfortable uh, hostile again like I've watched them a few times but they don't feel comforting for me but they are good they really they are really good films but I struggle to watch certain scenes like I don't mind gore but when it's really really bad and it makes you like want to look away I do kind of struggle with that a little bit same saw for the same reason for some reason I don't know why the one I don't know which film it is of, of the Saw collection but there's one where um, I think it's like a police officer or something is going through a house and people are getting killed off and he has to decide whether he wants to save them or not and there's a little there's a bit where like some pigs get thrown down into a pit and there's a man just there with all these dead pigs and it just stuck in my head forever since and it just freaked me out so bad I don't even know why, I just, I, pigs, pigs are cute, and like, some pigs are cute, and some pigs just scare me, <laughs> like, I don't know, uh, Midsummer was fantastic, but I would never watch it again, because I left feeling just so depressed, and so disturbed, like, even though the guy was, like, a, a douche, like the the main guy her boyfriend i felt so bad for him when he was in the bear suit and like inside the bear and just it just made me feel horrible <laughs> just like i cried i think i actually was just sobbing through that whole scene <laughs> so funny um and then terrifier which i have to admit i have never actually seen terrifier um and i'm going to watch it because i feel like i'm either gonna love it and it'll be like a new favorite or I'm going to be like, mm, too much for me. But the actor who plays Art the Clown was actually at For the Love of Horror in full costume. Um, and you could get your picture taken, you could get autographs from him. And apparently he was like really nice as well during the Q&As. So I think I will give that a go. Um, there's quite a few on my list, but I haven't been able to watch them this, this Halloween because I haven't been well and I've had so much going on as well but there's quite a few I can't really remember any off the top of my head but I've watched some of the new things that have come out like Mr. Har Harrington's phone is that the name of it? that was pretty good but again it was one I would probably not watch again it's like you start watching it and you want to watch it to the end and know what happens but you're not necessarily gonna repeat it, watch it because once you know what happens, that's it. So anyway, I hope that that was enjoyable. I did notice that while I was kind of waffling on, I was talking a little bit fast, a little bit animatedly. So I hope it was still uh, relaxing enough that it wasn't too stressful. Because sometimes when I watch ASMR, if people are talking super quickly, especially if you watch the shorts, um, it actually gives me anxiety instead of relaxing me. <laughs> so, but I um, I do waffle. I'm a big kind of talker. So, yeah. Please let me know in the comments if you have any that you think are kind of classics that I might have missed. And also, if you have any underrated horror movies. Um, like I watched one recently with Corey Feldman. It was like a short like a mini movie called I think it was like Splatter or Spatter or something and he was like back from the dead and killing off his ex bandmates I just love anything that is under the radar and not very well known even if it is pretty trash or pretty low budget especially if it is low budget I love everything like 80s movie style you know B movie style so please, please leave me a ton of comments on this one because I really want to 
watch some more movies and maybe I can make a little review for you, kind of like a short um, video about what I thought of your movie suggestions. So anyway, I will see you really soon.